Chapter 1 The David Rumsey Map Collection The David Rumsey Map Collection has a wide variety of different kinds of historic maps. At the top of the page you'll see some tabs. Click on View Collection. When you open up View Collection, click on Launch Luna Viewer. On the left hand side of the page you can refine your search to what, where, who, and when. Okay, so you got your atlas maps, your world maps, etc. You got United States, Germany, different countries. You got who made the maps and how many there are in parentheses. And below that is when. So you can pick a, a year that you want your map range to be in. If you expand the when menu, you can see that these maps go all the way back to 1536. So depending on what year that you want and where you want it, there's a wide variety of dates available too. Chapter 2, the Historic Marker Database. This is the Historic Marker Database. At the top of the page near the right, you'll see a box marked Geographic Lists. Click on that. When you click on geographic list, you can refine your search to countries and states. For this example, I picked North Carolina, and since they're in alphabetical order, I uh, picked on this one, the Battle of Claps Mill. When you click on the link, it'll bring you to the Battle of Claps Mill and give you the history of the monument and a brief history of what happened in that area. As you scroll down the page there are more pictures and it's also interactive so if you have pictures that you want to share you can upload them to this database. Chapter 3 The National Register of Historic Places The National Park Service has the National Register of Historic Places in the Plan Your Visit section, click on Find a Park. When you click on Find a Park, it'll bring you to this page. In this one, you can click on a state of your choice. In my case, I picked North Carolina. It shows you a map of where the National Historic Places are. When you click on Morse Creek National Battlefield, you'll have a, another link and a brief history of what happened at that site. In this case, there's a link to an, a YouTube video that describes the Morse Creek Anniversary Trailer, King George and Broadswords, so you can uh, feel free to get an idea of the lay of the land and the National Park Service historic virtual tour. Chapter 4, The National Archives. This is the splash page to the National Archives catalog. This is a very good archival website and it's open to the public. There's too much information to list here. At the bottom of the page are more online research tools that take you outside of this website. And a lot of these are very good so you can check these out at your leisure. Chapter 5, The Library of Congress. If you click on the Library of Congress Civil War Maps Collection, it will bring you to this page. This is a vast collection of different kinds of maps depending on what you're looking for. In this case I narrowed the search and just wanted to look at Civil War maps. You can scroll left or right and pick which image that you want to see. In this case I was interested in the route of the 10th New York Cavalry from Culpeper to Gettysburg. So it looks like a pretty interesting map so we're going to click on it and see what it has. When you click on the image, you can view the enlarged image and there's the title of it, the route of the 10th New York Cavalry from Culpeper to Gettysburg and return. Summer and fall campaigns of 1863. This should be pretty good. This appears to be a hand-drawn map, but it looks to be very detailed. Now I just zoomed in on it and you can see that there are encampments located all over the place. This is just a small area. It also 
tells you the dates that they were camped, the direction that they were traveling. Wow, this is a wealth of information right here. Chapter 6, Interactive Map Databases. A lot of states have historic map overlays or interactive map databases. So if you do a Google search for your state and historic map overlays, you might come up with something similar to this. If you click on the interactive tab, you'll see a list of the counties and the dates of the maps and what kind of map it is. Once you open up the map for Ash County, it will overlay onto the a larger map. And on the left side where it says map control, you can turn the historic map on or off, or you can fade the historic map and make it transparent. Here's a section of the map with a fade historic map turned off. This shows a couple of churches and a school. So as I turn on the fade historic map, it makes it transparent so I can see the current roads. So I turn the historic map off. So now you can just see the lay of the land without the transparent map. If you go back to the menu and you click on Sanborn maps, Sanborn maps are typically fire insurance maps for towns. Here's an example of a fire insurance map for Greenville in Pitt County, North Carolina from May 1916. It shows the plot of the town and all the buildings that are present. And on the right side, you can go through different thumbnails and zoom in on different sections of town. Chapter 7, Historic Map Works. This is the site of the historic map works. When you click on browse, you can specify the continent, the country, and the state and province. In this case, I pick the continent of North America, Canada, and the province of Ontario. This has a list of maps going back as far as 1764. As you scroll down the list, you can find a map that interests you and then click on it. So here I selected a map of Ontario and Carrollton County in 1879. Here we have Fitzroy Township and Fitzroy Harbor Village. And uh, you can see that it's plotted out and you can see all the property owners' names here. Something interesting at the bottom of the map is a little picture of a little church. Well, it does appear that there's a little church there and it's just south of the town that has a grist mill, a sawmill, and a carding mill. So a lot of mills around that area, so uh, might be interesting to do some relic hunting around that area. That looks pretty cool. Chapter 8, United States Geological Survey Topo Viewer. This is one of the most useful tools I've come across. This is from the um, United States Geological Survey, the USGS. It's called Topo Viewer. Once you open up Topo Viewer, this is the splash page that you get. And you can uh, search by location. On the right hand side is your menu. And so once you enter in a location, you can click anywhere on the map to uh, pick that area. So we're just going to click a spot on the map and see what comes up and find a historic spot to research. So I clicked on the map in northern Alabama, just somewhere in the middle of the country and it comes up with a list of maps in that general area. Here's a close-up of the uh, 1892. You can download the JPEG, a KMZ, a GeoTIFF, or a GeoPDF. Once you click on the download, it'll download in a PDF format. Once I open the map, I can go to the bottom and you can see the stamps from the USGS. So I just go to a random spot on the map and here we have Huntsville and Athens. Athens in Limestone County and Huntsville is in Madison County. If there's nothing of interest that you can find, then you can always go to a newer map. And then those typically have the schools and the churches and stuff like that. So I zoom out and now I'm looking at Athens so I can get some uh, references. So I can compare that to a, a current map and I can go from there. Typically, where creeks cross the road, where rivers cross the road, or major intersections, a lot of those places typically don't change. So those are good reference spots. So if I open up Google Maps and I open up Athens and I find the Piney Creek, go to Satellite View, 
and uh, see if the uh, structure is still there. Well, the school's no longer there. The Eastside Animal Hospital and Pet Resort occupy that land now. Chapter 9, Historic Aerials. Here's the splash page when you open it up. So you can log in, you can sign up, or you can uh, click on Viewer just to the right of where it says Historic Aerials. So in the Viewer page, you can enter the geo coordinates or street address of the place that you want to check out, or you can just put in a town name. So here at the top, you can see the geo coordinates to that uh, that little plot of land that's uh, next to the animal hospital. So when you hit go, it shows you the area that you want to see on map, and on the left hand side, you can click on aerials, topos or atlases. Here I clicked on topos and then I clicked the earliest one that I could find which is 1935 and the school is still there in 1935. So if I switch to aerials, the earliest aerial this one has is 1981. So it doesn't really help me much. So now we're going to find out how to get permission to metal detect that little spot of land. Chapter 10 County GIS Databases and do a Google search for GIS Limestone County, Alabama. I'll go with the .us. When the City of Athens and Limestone County GIS Gallery pops up, and down here at the bottom left it says City of Athens Map Public App. Then it'll pop up with this Maps link. Once you click on that, you'll have to agree to the above conditions or it'll kick you out. So check I agree and then click OK. Now you're in the GIS viewer and you can zoom out or in. We're going to find Piney Creek and US 72 and see, if, uh, see who owns that plot of land. So here we found it and it's parceled up pretty good. If you click inside the shape, it'll tell you that this little plot of land is owned by PA Enterprises LLC. So, just out of curiosity, we want to see who our neighbors are. So, we click on the neighboring property and see who owns it. And lo and behold, it's PA Enterprises. Here's another example of a GIS app. This one's in Jackson County, Michigan. This one has a lot more features parcel viewers, real estate viewers, and etc. So, we're going to click on Real Estate Viewer and see what we get. So when I click on Real Estate Viewer, it shows the, the map of Jackson County. So here we have some land around Cranberry Lake. So I found a spot on Cranberry Lake and I clicked on it and it comes up with this. So it shows this plot of land is uh, separated by Cranberry Lake and is owned by, it's a residential vacant it's owned by the point at cranberry lake property so it's land available for purchase or you can probably go there and ask them if you can metal detect around there do some research see if there's anything historical about the area in conclusion i showed you 10 different tools that you can use to find great metal detecting places if you found this information useful please click the like button subscribe and leave a comment below this is Mike with Metal Detecting North Carolina, and I'll see you guys on the next one.